what's going on everybody welcome back to football therapy with me your host Jan I hope you are all doing well and welcome back to the channel and to this video which is something a little bit different that I wanted to do today I wanted to talk about how Chelsea Football Club works notably speaking about four people within the club who are all very important well Three of the four are very important for different reasons. Starting off with Chelsea coach Frank Lampard, I want to tell you guys what he does at the club. Pretty self-explanatory, but a couple of things in there might interest you. I also want to talk about Petr Cech and his role at Chelsea Football Club at the moment. What he's doing and what the club see for him in terms of a long-term plan for his role. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Marina Granovsky, the Iron Lady of Chelsea. I'm going to be covering some stuff on her as well. And of course, the man behind it all, Roman Abramovich. What's his status in West London? What's going on? How involved is he with Chelsea Football Club at the moment? So there's a lot to crack open with these four characters throughout Chelsea Football Club, but I want to take a moment um, to explain some of this information I got from Liam Twomey of The Athletic. He's like a Chelsea Football Club journalist, writer. I heard him speaking on the TIFO Football podcast. And although much of the stuff I already knew, he did say some interesting things that I'm going to regurgitate in this video. So shout out Liam Twomey. Also, if you enjoy Chelsea Football Club content on YouTube, I'd urge you guys to subscribe to my channel, Football Therapy, if you've not already done so, as I upload daily. Usually I talk about what's going around the news and headlines, but sometimes I do videos a little bit different like this so please do subscribe and why not like the video all right then let's get into it let's start with Chelsea coach Frank Lampard of course a Chelsea legend Chelsea's top scorer arguably Chelsea's greatest and best ever player Frank Lampard was appointed Chelsea manager when the club was going through a difficult turbulent time where they were navigating for a transfer ban of course and also they lost their biggest goal threat and creator in the shape of Eden Hazard. A lot of people may think getting Frank Lampard was just a PR move to settle a ship and maybe play a few kids to take Chelsea through said turbulent timers but no the club do believe in a long-term vision with Frank Lampard. Not only does Roman Abramovich want to see his academy at Chelsea finally play dividends, remember Abramovich paid a lot of money into the Chelsea academy a long time ago and he wanted that to start pumping through into the first team that was a genuine desire of the Chelsea owner and it's happening now so that's checkbox one. Chelsea also appreciate how there was difficulty getting in mercenary managers in and out through the revolving door. Sure it worked for a long time but with the likes of Sari, Jose Mourinho and Conte they all brought their own problems and working with someone like Frank Lampard who has a genuine connection with the club and will put the club before himself they saw an opportunity to build something. It's all very well having Frank Lampard and Jody Morris bringing in the kids, but they do need to believe in him to have a long-term success at Chelsea, maybe a dynasty, but you know, winning trophies. And that brings me on to the transfer situation of Frank Lampard, because apparently he has more control over transfers than both the likes of Maurizio Sarri and Antonio Conte. In fact, only Jose Mourinho has a sort of similar amount of control regarding transfers, and he was like, you know, the world's best coach at one point. Which is interesting, right? Frank Lampard in his second year of management, still really inexperienced, is being trusted to, to handle a lot of responsibility in regards to the direction of the club and buying players, which is really interesting. Clearly Lampard's genuine love for Chelsea Football Club and, you know, he's demonstrated immense intelligence throughout his career. Let's not forget Lampard's a very intelligent man. The club trusts him to genuinely steer the ship in many ways in building and developing something special. So Frank Lampard, not only an advocate of playing the youth, not only the Chelsea first team coach, but also actually has a lot of power behind the scenes as well. Right, let's move on to Petr Cech, technical and performance advisor. This is kind of a peculiar title the Chelsea Football Club have given Petr Cech. A lot of people would have assumed that he was coming in to replace uh, Michael Emanalo as the technical director, but the truth is Petr Cech hasn't really done that. He hasn't got anywhere near the amount of power as Michael Emanalo did. He doesn't have an external network of scouts and he really doesn't have that much power. A lot of the stuff that Petr Cech does do at Chelsea, it's all genuinely in-house. He sort of acts as a liaison on between different parties throughout the club, the business, keeping everyone happy, looking at everyone 
internally, but that's not necessarily the long-term plan for Pesacek. Much like Frank Lampard, Chelsea Football Club look at Pesacek and respect his intelligence and perhaps connectivity with Chelsea Football Club. Petacek, of course, has a lot of academic intelligence, but he also has a lot of social and emotional intelligence, which makes him a really valuable figure when it comes to keeping everyone happy and like keeping lines of communication open. You can bet Petacek's title of technical and performance advisor will change throughout the years. The club want to leave it open because they want to assess where his talents lie and then see his role evolve at Chelsea Football Club and perhaps he will become a technical or sporting director, but perhaps not. Regardless, they see value in him as an asset and they want to sort of nurture his talents and eventually see where he lands within the club because they believe in his abilities generally and they think there's a really good role for him within the club, which he'll grow into. Next up, the Iron Lady herself, Marina Granovskaya. Right, Marina has been at Chelsea for years and years and years now. She's slowly gone up the table in terms of power as Roman Abramovich has perhaps taken a couple of steps backwards. Not that Abramovich was ever at the forefront of Chelsea. Marina used to work at one of Roman's other companies and he brought her into Chelsea to sort of deal with the finances as he saw her as a powerhouse negotiator, which by the way, she very much is. As the years went on, Marina became more and more powerful within Chelsea Football Club and when recently Michael Emanalo left, she sort of absorbed a lot of his duties at Chelsea Football Club and as things stand, she is the director of Chelsea. She is the head honcho behind Roman Abramovich and she deals with everything day to day. When it comes to transfers, it's pretty much all her that deals with it. Of course, like I said previously, she consults Frank Lampard pretty heavily and takes in what he has to say, but negotiations, liaisons, meetings, everything, it's all Marina Granovskaya. Although people might not necessarily deem her a football person, um, because she comes from sort of like finance business corporate background she is as I previously stated an amazing negotiator really good at getting deals over the line that are in the uh, interests of Chelsea Football Club and really she's pretty much the best at what she does. Whether things will stay like that at Chelsea Football Club, I'm not so sure. I think over time, a few of her roles will then get distributed to other figures within Chelsea Football Club and you might see Chelsea looking a bit more like a European superpower in terms of the structure and how they're run a few years down the line. But still, if you look close enough, you'll realize that Chelsea are actually very lucky to have Marina at the helm. Next up and finally Roman Abramovich, the Russian oligarch Chelsea owner himself. Of course he came in back in the day in the early 2000s and bought Chelsea and supplemented the club with a lot of cash to see it rise up the echelons of English football and become what it is today. Roman had huge ambition for Chelsea and may still do. Obviously he put a lot of money into the academy like I said earlier on in the video spent loads of his own money in terms of investment into the club so they could buy amazing players and also he was really interested in redeveloping Stamford Bridge by the same architects who made the bird's nest Obviously, that's sort of been cancelled at the moment for a bunch of reasons. One reason being, Roman Abramovich has had his UK work visa denied or not denied. It was being scrutinised more and more and more and he withdrew his appeal. It is thought that Roman Abramovich is incredibly frustrated with the UK government after, after taking so much time to assess his visa that he's just said, you know what, screw it. I'm out, man. Although with his Israeli passport, he is indeed allowed to visit the UK, he's not allowed to visit the UK when it comes to work or working. Now that leaves him in a really precarious position because obviously he wants, he always used to go to Stamford Bridge, right? You'd always see him up in his box applauding. He hasn't been to Chelsea, to Stamford Bridge for a long, long time. That's probably because he's left in this precarious situation that is watching his football club play. Is that considered work? You could argue it probably is, and the last thing he needs is to be investigated at the moment. You can understand why Roman Abramovich is frustrated with the UK government after putting so much into the English economy with Chelsea Football Club, but we'll have to see how things stand if he eventually gets it resolved, or if he has a long-term plan in getting it resolved. The truth is, Roman Abramovich has not lost interest in Chelsea, and the club is not for sale. In fact, he's put nearly a quarter of a billion uh, pounds of his own funds recently into the club to keep it afloat when they bought Kepa, 
Jorginho, etc. Also, Abramovich is very hands-on when it comes to campaigns at Chelsea. Obviously, the big anti-Semitism campaign that Chelsea Football Club recently had had his fingerprints all over it. He was very hands-on and integrated in something that actually means a lot to him. So, Roman Abramovich doesn't want to sell and he's still interested in Chelsea, but how the situation develops and evolves is uncertain yet. The truth is, there is something new building at Chelsea that he's probably very interested in as well, and as the sort of next couple of seasons unfold, I think we'll learn a lot more about Chelsea Football Club, how it works and how it's being restructured and where everyone stands. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. If you've enjoyed the content, I'd urge you to please like the videos. That helps me out a lot. And remember to subscribe. If you're new to football therapy and you like Chelsea Football Club content, I upload daily. I usually go around the news headlines and talk about what's going on there. But sometimes I do different stuff like this. You're welcome to follow me on social media as well, at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.